overview. These are some of the works that I posted online. Where is everyone? Oh, I didn't post that one. So this is called Kava Home. No, I'm sorry, Kava Refuge. I changed some of the titles recently so I don't have them memorized. Um, this is Kava Refuge. And this, as well as two other pieces, which also feature the structure of the home. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, hi there, Peggy. Uh, we're just talking about my chair pieces. So this piece and two other pieces were created earlier this year, um, around the time of the Australian wildfires. Um, I don't typically create work that's so responsive to very contemporaneous circumstances. Um, my work tends to deal more with overarching ideas such as mindfulness, um, such as women in gender roles, and but not tied to specific current events, I should say. So uh, this was interesting for me to work in this direction. And the works were quite a bit darker than what I normally do, but I felt this really strong urge, let me put this higher, to deal with the subject matter. And um, you think, I had, I think I had already started, I forget which I started first, this one or this big guy. This is the bigger that I have that I've been sharing. Um, I can't recall which one was first, but the womb chair, I'm trying to recall if I used the womb chair in anything else prior to this. I can't remember. I may have. I'm going to have to go back and check. It's possible. But anyway, regardless, the womb chair, the reason for the chair is, um, it's certainly a segue for my image transfers because I have the T. Uh, packaging that's transferred onto the background. You can see that. And I can show you, this is one of my T-scapes in progress. And this is a, there is a chair there. It actually transferred, transferred really poorly. So I'm going to have to either do another transfer, fix that. But that's what my transfer looks like when I first put down a tea bag. So, you know, the tea, just grab a bag. I'm not going to have the same Oops, I'm not gonna have the same bag, but I have all of these tea bags saved. So I take these, open them up, and I coat the surface of paper with soft gel, which is a glorified archival glue. Oop. Then I burnish it and pull everything, all of the detritus on the inside off. So I end up with these, you know, and, and these are more complete and these were more intentionally torn to represent the structure of a home. So I was looking at the womb chair as literally a place of embrace. Um, womb chairs were designed by um, Saarinen in the mid-century of the 20th century, mid-century, 20th century. And he literally did try to create something that was embracing. Um, and, you know, it, it really... It ties into me to some of the works that I've done in the past dealing with women. So maybe there is some embodiment of a suggestion of a female in the womb chair. I'm not sure. Um, not necessarily intentional. But the idea here is that there's all this destruction going on around um, this darkness. And within this space, there is refuge. Uh, the, the structure, the orb up here was sort of suggestive of a halo. It ended up looking a little more like a stylized sun 
you could interpret it how you want. Um, but this piece in particular was done on aqua board. So this is a board that has a coating on it that accepts water media. So it's a little bit different than paper. The texture is different. I don't know if the texture reads on this, but I also used a water soluble graphite, which is a pencil. That's where I got some of these dark graphite gray marks. It's a pencil and there's some linear aspects in there as well where you can see the mark of the pencil. And then you can also wash out the pencil as well. So that was how I got some of those dark, ominous looking clouds. And then I have this piece, which is, which one is this? This one is, uh, ha ha ha, did I write it down? This is Ginger Home, I believe. Yeah, this is Ginger Home. So this is another piece also dealing with, um, as, as a response to the Australian wildflowers. It was playing with, a little more with abstraction than what I normally work with. Um, and the, I left the tea in this particular one very evident, the three ginger, um, if you can read it, it's in reverse. So this piece is on a slightly deeper, this is actually a two inch deep cradle. Um, sometimes, you know, I've, sometimes I've played with different surfaces and different depths just because of what's available in the store at the time, or I'm just playing with things. So I was just using up what I had in my studio. So that's what, uh, is the cause of the difference in the depth. Uh, when I finish these, I do spray these with a UV coating because it is watercolor. So they are protected. Um, and then the sides, I also treat with a furniture wax paste. And that just allows um, for me to leave the wood natural, which I like the feel of that and the look of it, but it protects the surface so it can, from staining, you can clean it. Um, so that's the way I handle the edges. Um, I'd love to know if you are ever interested in some other type of finish versus this, but currently all of my T-scapes are a raw wood finish and exposed. And you know, a, a panel like this or even like this can be hung. These particular ones haven't been wired yet, but if you purchase them, they will be wired on the back. I'll show you ones that look like, look wired. Um, but panels um, like this can be hung directly without framing for a very contemporary finish um, and it's also a very easy way of, of simply putting the work up but they also are frameable now the deeper ones require a much deeper molding they are they do make moldings that could work with this but the narrower ones are certainly easier let me just show you what a wired back looks like and what a floated what a frame might look like my original T-scapes from the very beginning. So it's this is actually paper that's mounted onto a cradled panel and then I wire it on the back. And every piece has a label on the back with an inventory ID as well as a title, a little bit of a bio about me. So that's on the back of every work. So these new works, I haven't finished that, but that will go on with anything that gets shipped out. And then a way of mounting these is using a float frame. So I have a few float frames in my studio. So some of my work, if you look at my website, there is there are generally, in most cases, two price options. There's either the price for the work unmounted, or there's the price um, mounted. And I did not put framed prices on for these new works, but you can ask me about framing because I do have, for particularly the five by sevens, I do have a few extra frames sitting in my studio and I can certainly order frames as well. Oh, thanks, Christine. I gl I'm glad that you like the raw wood. So this is a float frame. Um, and I get these from a framer out in Tennessee that has been really great to me. Um, he, he sells hardwood frames. These are a maple, uh, they're a natural finish. So they are, um, I guess it's a polyurethane. 
I would imagine, finish to these. But what I love about a float frame is that it creates space around the painting to breathe. I've never been particularly fond of frames that cover up the edges of the painting for my work. Um, I tend to use a lot of the surface um, or I tend to explore edges like this one. It goes right up to the edge and I'd like the space for that to kind of go off and breathe. So this is a really great way of finishing out an artwork. And if you ever purchase something from me and you want to do a float frame, um, I can always get them in stock and have those ordered. So what else? So the chairs, uh, there's one more chair here that is part of the Australia. This is called Nighty Night. So again, the Saarinen chair, a little more of a, of a um, literal nod to a halo in this piece and really going into an eerie kind of background. So that's this piece. And this is, this is again, a slightly, this is a different manufacturer. I think I got this from a different art store. So the finish in the back, it's a, it's a rounded corner, but the front is pretty much the same, but the side of the edge is, uh, I think one and three quarters versus one is an inch and one art, one is two inches. So all of those sizes are on my website. So from there, I created those pieces that are really true mixed media pieces using the water-soluble graphite. Also, in some cases, I used a water-soluble crayon as well as the watercolor and the image transfer. And somewhere along the way, I also, actually, this was a carryover. So these two pieces are actually related. So this one is called... What is the name of this? This is Antioxidant Sweet Tangerine Zion. And this piece I started last year. So you can see if you look closely, there's the, um, this is the Sweet Orange Tea by Yogi Tea is in there. And then underneath the green, there's the antioxidant green tea packaging in there. This is the Virgin River that runs through Zion. Um, we were in Zion two years ago. Gosh, it's almost three years ago now, two and a half years ago. Um, and, and that trip is where the, is the genesis of all of this body of this body of work that I've been working on was being out in Utah and Wyoming. But anyway, this piece um, I explored at home, I also use this a little bit to demonstrate to some of my students at some point. So there's a lot of really um, beautiful greens in here and rich purples and like a chili orange, which is mostly coming through due to the tea bag. Um, and then those beautiful blues of the river. So then I took that same image, this is a five by seven on paper. I took that same image and I played with abstracting it and drawing. Um, and this was a lot of fun. I don't know where this is going, but um, I find satisfaction in both processes. And I'd like to explore this more, working with this water-soluble graphite. There's something really, um, again, for lack of a better word, satisfying with the way that the pencil glides onto the surface. And then if the surface is wet, how the pencil will deepen its intensity. And you'll feel the shift in the actual pencil when you're working with it. Um, it almost, it's almost like the pencil turns into like a clay and like you're drawing with wet clay. I think that's a great, I think that's a great metaphor, drawing with wet clay. Um, you know, and I really wanted to leave space in this piece and a lot of white space and intentional openness. And I've told my students in the past that I think one of the most difficult things of making an artwork is actually the process of leaving things out is more difficult than including. It's easy to just keep putting stuff in, but I believe it's much harder 
to stop and say this is done. So this came out of that process. And this one is called Sleeping River. There's bedtime tea under there. Okay, so what? So then I moved into, at some point, well, we'll go to this other, this other one. So I started playing with um, Nujabi paper, which is a handmade paper from India. It is, I was actually exposed to this by an artist in Maplewood, Sarah Klein. She's been doing work on it, and I also saw it at Jerry's, our art store in West Orange, and I was just so intrigued by the edges. Uh, these are pre-cut, and it's a heavy paper, and you can see the texture almost, let me see, I don't know if you can tell from the back, but it almost feels like it's woven. It has like a woven texture to it, which reminds me of linen, which is a... If I'm going to paint in oils on a, a fabric, I prefer to paint on linen. So maybe that's where my love of this paper is coming from. But these are pre-cut in, in standard sizes. So I, I get this one is five by seven. And this particular piece is called Settling In. Um, I did a piece just of the chair, not this chair, but of... Um, my friend, Marsha, who runs um, a writing co-op in, it's in Orange, called The Right Space. She opened up her space in January and had this amazing leather easy chair in there. And as a gift to her on the opening of her store, I painted her chair. And I was really intrigued with just the chair and what that might look like on its own. So that was the inspiration for this piece to just leave everything else out and explore the chair by itself. And this was painted around, I think I have it on my website. I think I started this around the time of coronavirus starting and whether, I don't know if the background was intentional or subconscious, uh, but I would really wanted to play with that sense of the chair being light and the background being really dark. So there's a lot of different colors going on in the background. There's some purples and Payne's gray, which is a color created with a mixture of sometimes um, a burnt sienna and a blue and a red. Make different mixtures. Okay, so that's that one. And then this was the most recent piece that I that I did. Um, this one is called Spicy Sweet Seat. So this piece was created um, just last month. I had the opportunity to travel to Montana uh, right at the time of the beginning of it was before everything was shutting down. Um, it was the first weekend in March. I actually was pondering not going. Um, things weren't shut down here in New Jersey. Um, and nothing was sort of happening in the middle of the country. And I had a, a show and I made the decision to go. Uh, and I'm so glad that I did. It was my first weekend traveling completely by myself in a place that I wasn't familiar with. And being out in Montana, uh, I was in Billings. Um, I knew nothing about it before I went. Uh, there's so much history there, but there's so much space. And the, uh, the landscape is just, it's so different from Utah and from Wyoming. Uh, it's, it's the, I, from the map, I believe it's considered part of the Plains, Billings. But outside, just on the edge of Billings is an area called the Rim Rocks. And, um, and then outside, maybe five miles away, I'm not sure if it's that close or if it was a little farther, it was about a 20 minute drive outside of Billings. Um, there's a, I think it was a state park or a county park called Pictograph State Park. And all around that area are these amazing yellow, yellow colored sandstone. 
um, I believe they call it Eagle Sandstone in my research. I'm not 100% certain on that. But this piece stemmed from that visit. And the chair was simply, uh, or not so simply. Sometimes I take chairs from the Blue Dot catalog. I love the finish of their paper, and I love the clean lines of their chairs. So sometimes you will find uh, Blue Dot chairs in my work. So this was a blue dot chair. You can see where I cut it out. Hold on, it's that one. There we go. So that got transferred in here. And also I think I was, I, I know I was purposefully thinking more about space and breathing. So the chair literally is, um, is a signifier to the viewer to sit. So this does come out of my meditation practice, um, which I've been working off and on for the past uh, couple of years. And it's, so it's an invitation to sit. It's unexpected in many of the spaces. Um, so it's a, it's sort of a way to, for me to help you see the landscape in a different way. Um, the same with the T in the background. Seeing the text shine through, um, and this is a little less of a landscape than the other pieces. There is a, a suggestion of scape, but um, this is almost more of a still life in a way. But the text showing through is an opportunity to me for the viewer to look deeper and really stay in the work. And then my last piece that I have available is this piece, which is called A Seat in the Snow. And it dawned on me, I posted this just the other day, uh, this particular piece, I think it's about 14 inches by 11 inches off the top of my head. Um, this is a piece that's quite layered and developed over a period of time. I started it in January and I think I finished it around March, but it was, uh, there was a snowstorm. I forget when it was, maybe the storm was in December. We had a snow and um, as the snow kind of lingered for a few days. We had this amazing ice all over the trees and um, it was like walking through a winter wonderland. And this location is in our South Mountain Reservation, which is about five minutes from my house. Um, it's preserved land on a, a mountain. It was um, used by George Washington's army during the revolution as a beacon point um, to communicate different locations in New Jersey because it's one of the higher points on the east coast of New Jersey in the northern part. Um, I'm just due west of New York City. So um, anyway, I, I went through uh, South Mountain with my dog. She and I went on our own in December for a run um, up. This is a paved path through the reservation that... Is only open to cars to get to parking lots, but then it opens up into a, just a paved running path. And um, I'm particularly intrigued also by this notion of the suggestion of humans. The chair is that suggestion of the human, the painted lines. Um, it's also a direction. It's a, a something that pulls our eye through the piece. So um, anyway, it was the last time that I went for a run with him, I believe in the reservation. He passed away in March. So this piece represents both sort of the end of my time with him, as well as um, the one of the last times that I was in the reservation before the shutdown. So just today they opened the reservation in New Jersey and we'll see if we're going to go. We live in a very populated part of New Jersey. So those are the works that I have uploaded. 
I really appreciate you joining me in my studio. If you didn't get on here right when I was live, I hope you'll take a moment and check it out and um, know that now through Tuesday, um, any original artwork that you buy from me, you can participate in my Give or Save event where you can purchase work and ask me to donate 30% of the value of the work to Feeding America, which is a highly regarded um, charity in the US, which is supporting um, food pantries all over the United States. And they um, link up directly to a large food pantry in New Jersey, which isn't far from my house. It services our local area. Um, or if you are in a position where you would prefer to take advantage of a reduced price on the work, you can do that as well. And there's information on my website on how to do that. Um, I will not judge whichever path you take. Whatever is right for you, I understand and I appreciate. And I hope that over the next few days, if you're in a position to purchase work, that you do so knowing that I'm going to be able to pay it forward to an important organization that's very much needed right now. Um, and if you need to take that discount, please do so. Um, this is not something I run often. Uh, so it's a, a great time to collect the work. And you know, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to direct message me, send me an email, um, you can text me. My cell phone is on my website. I'm happy to engage with you, answer questions. Um, if you want to set up a another like virtual, um, you know, FaceTime with my work, I'm happy to do that as well. So, uh, yeah. Um, but the work is that event is going on through Tuesday, and the site. The, um, the link on my website is now live, so you can get to it um, directly um, through my homepage, trailworks.com with two L's. Thank you so much for joining me in my studio on this glorious sunny day. I don't know if it's sunny where you are, but it is beautiful where I am, and that's definitely lifting me up. Have a great weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.